Well hey guys, welcome to Life of Gaz. Now, this video I'm going to do a bit of a catch it, cook and eat with sea bass. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, sea bass sushi. Now, to do this, make sure first and foremost, if you do want to try this, you use the freshest fish you can. The fish which I'm using was caught less than 12 hours ago, so it's prime for it. Now what I'm going to do is just run you guys through uh, some of the preparations and fill it in and also some of the ingredients we use and we'll start cooking this all off. Let's look at the ingredients we're going to use. Uh, we've got obviously some fresh ingredients. The fish isn't out here yet because I've not filleted it. But we've got obviously a cucumber and we've got some avocado. Now uh, there's also some Nora sheets just here, some black sesame seed or uh, some black sesame seeds. We've got some sushi rice, some wasabi paste, we've got light soy sauce, rice uh, vinegar, and a little bit of mirin as well. And pretty much that's all we're going to be using. So first things first in this recipe, we need to start preparing the rice. Now before I start cooking this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just place it in a bowl and give it a bit of a soak. Now before I soak it, obviously I'm going to just wash it through a little bit, just until the water starts running clear. I'm not really measuring this because uh, I'm sort of quite confident really. You know, I'm, that's about as much as I need. So what I'm going to do is wash this through a few times until the water remains clear just like it is now and then I'm going to leave this to soak for about half an hour and what this will do this will allow the rice to absorb the water all the way through to the centre so once I start cooking it then what's going to happen is is that rice is going to cook evenly. So last night I was lucky enough to catch this bass, uh, it was caught about 12 hours ago so it's had time for rigor mortis to set in and the fish to go stiff. This makes car, uh, filleting the fish a lot easier. Now I've left the guts in on this fish as uh, I normally do with bass and the reason being is the fact that having uh, the body cavity full helps me when it comes to actually scaling the fish and what I'm going to do is just take off the scales off both sides just like this and uh, leave them in a little pile over there I'll wipe them up before I uh, start getting into the rest of this fish and then once you've got them off of uh, one side just flip over take them off the other side as well now I'm using the back of the knife to do this so the sharp edge is up here the back of the knife obviously is very blunt and I'm not going to cut into the fish at all so now I've got all the scales off of the uh, bit of the fillet I'm interested in. I'll just uh, move them around, put them in the bin and scaling these fish just as easy as that. So now I've got rid of all the scales, I'm just going to gut the fish. And all you do is just go in between these two fins, there's a little bit of bone there you just want to avoid when you go in and cut and just try and get to one side or the other of the vent just there because if you burst the guts you can sour the flavour of the fish. Now once you've done that then what I'll do is put the knife back in and I'll go up between those two fins, find the gap there, go through that bone and right up essentially to where the gills are. Now there is a bit of blood when you do this, you just got to obviously make sure you wash the fish out uh, sort of midway through. Now it's quite late in the year and there's a lot of fat in these fish at this time of year. Uh, which isn't a problem, just shows the fish are nice and healthy and ready to go off and start spawning. Now once you've uh, got into the fish just there then you just need to fo uh, follow that all the way up and cut it off with the knife as high up as you can just in behind the head. That is your fish gutted and that is everything I don't want. So next I've just got to take the fillets off. Now there are lots of different ways to do this. Uh, you can leave the fillets down flat and uh, take them off like this. I don't like that way. It doesn't work for me as well as I feel this does. So all I'm going to do is cut either side of the fins just here down to the backbone, get to about here, knife in, run it out both sides and then take the fillets off just like that. Now before I get to cutting into the backbone there, just obviously need to cut through this section and uh, try and get rid of that fin in this at the same time because there's a little bit of bone in there as well. Flip it over, do the same on this side and uh, then that gives me a great, um, great place to sort of start working from just there. 
So now I'm down to the backbone on both sides. Uh, all I do is just obviously make a little start just there. Cut this to the side of the fins, not going too deep because uh, obviously uh, it's easier to sort of go back and redo it than to mess it up and try and start again. Do the same on this side. Now why I do both sides uh, to start with is because I find this easier when you've got this other fillet to hold on to when it comes to doing the second one. Now once I've done that, then what I'll do, obviously you can see the two gaps just there, is just bring the knife down to the backbone and just find that down there. You'll know when you're on it because you'll feel it running against your knife blade. And once you're down to that backbone and once you're past, uh, once you're past it, then all you do is put your knife through and just keep it on the backbone itself and come all the way down right out to the tail just there and you get obviously the backbone there. Now all you need to do is get the rest of this off um, with bass and this isn't, uh, they aren't as quite as easy as cod. Uh, there is a little bit more of a technique because you've got these thick ribs just here, you just need to get a knife in behind them and come up, uh, come up that way. Now what I'm going to do is just cut down and get down to those ribs on this side. Now fillet and fish is all about taking your time with it and uh, just obviously remembering that we're not all commercial fishermen, uh, we're not all on a time scale, we don't need to have 500 fish filleted in 10 minutes. So by taking your time, you just respect the fish and get as much meat off of it as you possibly can. Now I'm just going to fiddle with the rest of this fish and once I've fiddled with the rest of this fish, I'll have those nice fillets laid out. So there you go, I've got the two beautiful fillets just here and hardly anything left on that fish. Nice clean fillets and obviously a good yield off of what the fish was. Now for this recipe today, I don't need a lot of fish. So what I'm gonna do is just take the back section off of this fillet just here and that will give me more than enough fish for this recipe. Now this stuff here is just gonna get packed, put in the fridge and that'll be tea for tomorrow night. Now taking the skin off, literally all you do is just grip the back of the fish, cut right down to the skin and then let your knife do the work as it comes up through and takes that lovely little bit of meat out. Just like that. And what I'm going to do is essentially just cut it into strips about that big. You can cut it flat through that way, uh, but that's not, the re uh, that's not the recipe I'm going for today. So I'm just going to take off strips around about a centimetre in length. And those strips are just going to sit down the inside of the rolls. Half an hour has gone by and what I'm going to do now is uh, just obviously add this rice. It's absorbed the water right through to the centre. You can see the colour of the rice has changed. I'm going to just drain this off, put in a bit of extra water on, bring this to the boil, then put a lid, uh, then knock it down to a simmer, give it about 10-15 minutes and then what I'll do is take it off the heat and then let it steam for about another 15 minutes after that. Now what I'm going to do is just make the seasoning and uh, the seasoning I've got the rice one, uh, I've got the rice vinegar just here and what I'm going to do is give that uh, four uh, nice tablespoons just there in there just like that and I, now I've got the four tablespoons in there what I'm going to do is I'm going to add something to sweeten it up and what I'm going to use is a mirror now I'm going to use two tablespoons of this to that vinegar give that a little bit of a stir and what I'm going to do once the rice has uh, started to cool is I'm going to actually, um, sorry once, I, once the rice is cooked sorry I'm going to just add this about a quarter of it, stir it in, add another quarter, stir it in, another quarter until it's all gone. 
The rice, it isn't cool yet, but it's had about 10 minutes to steam and it's looking nice and sticky in there. It won't come out, which is a good sign. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the rice out of this pan just there into a glass bowl. Now, when you add the vinegar to it, uh, you don't actually want to do this with anything metal because it can react and it can then uh, change the flavour. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of that mirrored uh, rice vinegar mixture. Just add that all round. And then without stirring it, what I'm going to do is just chop and fold the rice just like this. Now I like to taste this as I go and the flavour of that is actually really good. Now I've got a bit more of the mixture left there but it'd become overpowering if I put it in so that is just going to go off to waste. So next I just need to cut my veg up. I've got cucumber and I've also got an avocado as well. Now it's important when you do this obviously you make sure you're cutting the right sort of amount and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the end of the cucumber off there. The sheets are about that long, so I'm going to just cut a section out of this at that length. And that will be absolutely grand. Now, I don't obviously don't want lots of uh, cucumber. I'm not going to use this entire, um, this entire cucumber just here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to knock that section out just like this. Stick that over to the side. Then I'm just going to cut a slit out of it just down here like that and just down like that and with any luck that should have uh, the two knife points could have met and it'll just pop out just like this now when it comes to obviously the uh, avocado this is quite a firm avocado it's ripe but only just and all I'm going to do is uh, take what I need out of that and the rest of it will go in the fridge for tonight. Now I'm just going to use this side. Now, uh, all I need to do obviously is get the avocado out of its skin. For this the easiest thing to do is just use a spoon, go in all the way around the outside, just follow the contours of the avocado just like this and then once you're, uh, once you're getting there all you need to do then is just go in underneath it and your avocado comes out perfectly just like so. Again with the avocado I just need to cut this into strips. We get to the creative part which is actually building the rolls themselves and I'm just going to do two different styles essentially. Just need to get these, uh, these nice sheets out and uh, just pick out one of those. Obviously they're very very thin so uh, big clumsy fingers like mine aren't always the easiest things to use. Now what I'm going to do is just lay that down on there. I'm going to put a bed of rice on and then I'm going to um, add my fillings to it. Now when you put work with your rice, it's sticky, uh, make sure obviously what you do is you just use uh, wet fingers. Those wet fingers are always good for uh, doing this sort of stuff. And pack it all down like this and just go to within about six centimeters on the top of that uh, that edge there and that's just to help you seal it. Now when I'm doing this I always like to do it with the rice when it's just a little bit warm and the reason for that is really because it's easier to sort of manipulate and to mold into shapes. And then I fill this out to the edges just like I'm doing here and then what I'll do is I'll then lay my toppings on and when I lay my toppings on I can then roll it up and sort of essentially get ready to work it all in. So for this one I'm just going to put a bit of cucumber just on the side there and then I'm going to line my fish up with that as well. Now I've lined it all up now I just need to roll it and just need to keep it together be quite firm with it and just roll it over onto itself like this keeping it together and then you should end up with a nice sort of neat roll just like you're going to see here just like that. Now 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to just leave this to the side and as you can see obviously it's nice and uh, nice and sort of malleable at the moment but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually stick this in the fridge and when I stick it in the fridge what's then going to happen is it's going to just firm up and it's going to make cutting it just a little bit easier now to do this uh, what I do need to do is just wrap my uh, little bamboo rolling mat just here in a little bit of cling film and I'll put my uh, there's my sheet just there now with this stuff I should have mentioned you've got a rough side and you've got a smooth side you want your rice on the rough side of it so now I've done that obviously I've got this covered in the cling film just there ready for rolling all I need to do now is add some black sesame seeds just like this to uh, to the top of there we give it a fairly liberal sprinkling and then what we'll do is uh, with this sheet just here now is we'll take it off gently flip it over and lay it right side down on top of the sesame seeds just like that so I'm going to put in this one avocado cucumber and sea bass just like the other one I'm just going to quite firmly roll it up remove the cling film and then sit that on the board ready to chill so these are about about an hour to chill now so ready to cut them now when you cut these you need a obviously a very sharp knife but also you need to just dip the knife in a bit of water so the blades wet and it stops the rice sticking to it and I'm just gonna cut these just to about that sort of size now the end is always going to look a little bit scrappy but as you move on down through the rolls they should start to look absolutely lovely just like that and of course do the same for this one as well plating them up I don't really like wasabi so I'm not going to use it that's for someone else who's eating it tonight with me but I'm just going to put a little dripper or two of uh, soy sauce down just like that and let's get ready to try the fruits of my labour well there you have it they're a bit big and chunky but I'm a guy and I like big chunky food and let's just have a little taste test, see what they're like. <laughs> they're absolutely amazing. Can't beat it. But if you've liked this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button down there. Check out my latest cooking video over there. And my cooking playlist up top.